Oftentimes, people want to reach out to somebody and they say, hey, can I pick your brain? I want your time that is very valuable to you. Can you give it to me? And I will give you nothing in return except you're entitled to help me because I've asked. <laughs> I think that's really broken, right? Like I think yeah. if you want to build a network and be surrounded by people that you could learn from, you need to approach it in the sense of how can I help this person? How can I genuinely help this person and not expect anything in return? I meet so many of these super, super successful people, basically every week. All of these people, man, they are just human beings. There's somebody with an idea, they're surrounding themselves with right people, right place, right time, right environment, right opportunity. They're all human beings and I think it's important to acknowledge that. They've just been working. That's literally all they've been doing. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of The CG Show. With me here today, Nathan Chan, the CEO of Founder, an online education company that is inspiring millions of entrepreneurs worldwide with how to run a business. Nathan, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me, Christian. It's a pleasure to be here, mate. We, uh, it, it's a messy. I stumbled across you. I've known Founder for a very long time. I think just in a sense of like it, it pops up uh, on on social media, and then you see an entrepreneur posted, and somehow then I stumbled across you about two years ago, and. Uh, been following your journey ever since, so uh, it's been great to to finally connect. I uh, it, it took me a couple goes to get you, but I'm uh, <laughs> I'm really pleased to have you, man. So, uh, how's everything been going? Yeah, things been good. Uh, as I was saying to you offline, uh, you know the journey of business it's it's up, it's down. The highs are high, the lows are low. Um, I went through a you know somewhat challenging year last year, personally and professionally. Um, you know, I think as as your business grows, you know, biz, businesses are built by people, right? And, um, you know, uh, sometimes people outgrow the business. Uh, sometimes the business outgrows them. Sometimes uh, you hire people and it's just not the right fit. And uh, sometimes you have to learn these hard lessons, right? About, not just around people, but all sorts of things, the way you structure your business, the business model, um, you know, what's the core business. And uh, yeah, it all just kind of hit uh, you know hit hit last year but uh things are really turning around now which is really exciting and it's i know i guess out of all these people that we interview at founder and tell their stories it's part of the journey right that you know you you fly close to the sun things get really tough and then you somehow find a way out of it what do you find like so we're obviously off camera as well we're talking that you've been 10 years uh at founder you just celebrated that so that's amazing congratulations um and you, you said obviously as well that last year was probably one of your toughest years. Like, what did you find? What were some of the challenges? Uh, maybe some, obviously, you probably don't want to talk about, but maybe some in general. What would what did you find that was hard and how did you overcome them? Yeah. So, look, I'll, I'll be open, honest, transparent. I, I don't really do many interviews and stuff like that, but um, I'm happy to share with, uh, you know, your community. Uh, and so I haven't spoken about this publicly. So, unfortunately, uh I'm now single, so uh, I was engaged. I was in a long-term relationship for around 12 years, so we broke wow. up last year, me and my ex. Uh, we had a, an e-commerce business together called Healthish. We've now sold that, um, and, uh, yeah, that was kind of a bit of a shock. So all the while I was working through, uh, you know, a separation of someone that I loved and cared for uh, immensely, and, wow. uh, you know, unfortunately we just grew apart. Um I had things happening on the business side where I had to let go of my right hand. I had to make his role redundant. Um, we had all sorts of challenges around paid advertising. Our paid advertising was one of our strongest growth channels and then all of a sudden it just dropped. Um, so, yeah, th th these are some of the challenges that I was facing and uh, I just kind of had to work through it. I can talk you, how, talk you through how I worked through it, uh, but basically – I put myself out there and started to really speak to a lot of people that have online education businesses, but then also past and previous mentors, um, just just looking for answers. And then, yeah, I, I look to friends. I have an incredible network around me, and this is key. If you want to build a successful business, you need to be surrounded by like-minded people, people that are at the same stage journey as you, 
and then also people that are a few years ahead. Uh, so it helps you, it keeps you going, it keeps you inspired, it keeps you grounded. And um, yeah, I, I, I became quite vulnerable with a lot of those people. And along the way, I was able to turn things around and and get through it. And I think that's quite typical, as I said before, to many of the entrepreneurs we interview a founder we, you know we interview we've interviewed so many incredibly successful people richard branson ariana huffington mark cuban you know the list kind of goes on we could go for days but um every single one of these founders have gone through some sort of adversity so i'd say last year was was close to my adversity uh and it was really tough but uh things are on the up which is really exciting and things are really turning around and the way I was able to get through it is just putting myself out there, speaking to people and learning from people that have, have built bigger businesses than me. And I think that's really kind of the key ethos of what we do with Founder and also our, our Founder Plus uh, online course platform. We go out and we find super smart people that are actually doing the thing that we want them to teach in their business and then we get them to give back and you can learn from people that have done it. That's amazing. Founder Plus, that's only recent. That's probably you started that about six months ago. Yeah, we launched about six months ago. And that's that's where our focus is going. Like um if I think about our purpose at Founder, it's really to how can we fuel or accelerate somebody's growth and also their future through entrepreneurship. And that that's one of many ways we're going to really help people, and that's through online education and and building what I believe will be like an alternative to to an MBA, like really learning from people that have done it. So in regards to just Founder Plus, uh, why would somebody want to um, to to sign up? Is it is it is it directed in a certain niche or is it just business in general? Yeah, so it's it's purely focused around people that have online businesses or would okay. want to learn how to uh, start or grow an online business. So yeah. uh we have so many different uh, programs and courses uh, from all sorts of really successful people. And the ambition is how do we get uh, the people that we interview to teach and give back on the platform at a, f a deeper level. So, um, and for us, it's really important, like within the, I guess, the entrepreneurial online education industry, there's a lot of stuff out there, right? So, so there's your sport for choice. And we want to become, and what I believe we are becoming is, is a provider of choice where you can you you can actually trust that these people are the real deal and the the education and and the experiences and the frameworks and the templates we just try and make it as easy as possible for you so if you want to know how to run facebook ads right you'd want to learn from somebody that spent over a hundred million dollars a year profitably so we found somebody that that's done exactly that. If you want to know how to start an e-commerce business, you would want to learn from somebody that's done it multiple times. It's built many multi-million dollar e-commerce stores. If you want to know how to build your YouTube channel, it's you will probably want to know from someone that's got over a million subscribers. And what's also cool is most of the people that teach on our platform, they don't need to teach to make money. And unfortunately, in the in this kind of air industry, uh, the people that are teaching, they they teach and that's their business. And yeah. it, it's so then when you that that starts to happen, um, you, you want to bring in as many people as possible. You want to enroll as many people as possible. So then you talk about things that perhaps are, you know, hard to believe to to bring people through the door. And for us, we want to create an extremely accessible online education platform for a really cost affordable membership price uh that is you know uh, one one fifth of the cost of an mba uh, so like you can enroll in founder plus get access to all of our courses plus future courses and everything that we do for only 1500 us dollars a year so it's, nice. it's not it's not that expensive and it's Ooh. constantly getting better and better and better so it's pretty cost affordable most courses you know, the ones that we read about or see online or see the ads are anywhere between a thousand or two thousand dollars just for one course. Uh, we have over 30 courses on our platform, we have many more coming, and the, the platform just keeps getting better and better. So, that's kind of the ambition. It's a lot cheaper than uh, universities, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I'm sure you'd probably learn a lot more 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 
how are you finding that? Um, uh, obviously, launching this now, uh, how are you finding, like, what's your thoughts on on, on universities in, in, in the modern era or in 2023, I guess? Um, and I know, obviously, they serve purpose if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, and, and things like that. Um, but just in general, like, you know, people go and yeah. spend, like, 30000 a year, whatever it is, to, to go do a business course from a guy that's never run a business. So um, it pretty much goes back. I know you, you were more referring to online um, platforms and stuff like that, but really my mind went straight to, to, to universities. When you speak to people, I would, I'm doing a business course, and in my mind I'm like, what are they actually teaching you? Like, what, what, <laughs> and yeah. I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think I think you kind of kind of answered it in of itself, Christian. But I'm not here to bash universities. Let's be clear, right? Like, um, I, I've got two degrees, right? I've got two degrees, right? One in business IT and one in marketing. Um, I've learned more though studying online myself and doing online courses and all sorts of other things and learning myself than self-taught um, than than both of those degrees. Uh, and look, you know, uh, I think universities have their place especially like you know if you want to be a physio you want to be a doctor yeah. um you know or all sorts of practical things right but i think when it's when it gets to theory when it the actual thing or the actual outcome you want you can't really get much from then i think it, yeah i don't i think it's broken right yeah. but at the same time right you know stanford university and you did like a you know an MBA at Stanford, and they bring in you know all sorts of legendary founders from Silicon Valley. Ha, oh, that would be awesome, right? Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, there's not many business courses that you can enroll in in university where you get that kind of access. And so for us at Founder, we're trying to create a really affordable, cost affordable alternative to people where they can get access to really, really incredibly successful smart founders that are doing it. Because a lot of our, a lot, like all of our courses are pre-recorded, right? So we can go on and we can have an exchange in value there. But also we have tons of live events and workshops and all sorts of things happening all the time. Um, so like you know, literally last week, the guy that co-founded Square with Jack Dorsey, oh, yeah. Dorsey, multi billion yeah. dollar, yeah. Think that company's a hundred billion dollar, yeah, hundred billion dollar market cap. Square they bought Afterpay. It's now called Block. Uh, Block he co-founded yeah. it. He's worth, you know, he's a multi, like a multi multi billionaire. Like he, yeah. So, so uh, not Jack, but his business partner Jim, Jim McKelvey. He was on a live call with like our That's community, crazy. and like you know, he's answering all sorts of questions. Like you get access to these kind of people, so we're, we're opening up these doors for people. Um, so. So to answer your question in summary, I think university for business schools has it has its place as long as the people that you're learning from, I think, are not teaching theory and have actually yeah. done it. And that's yeah. the key theme here. You want to learn from people that have actually done it. And that's, you know, like when I talked about my adversity, I went out there and I canvassed the market and I looked at kind of all the different businesses, business models and the experiences that I'd had with the way that I, I was building founder and, and I was learning from people and, and like getting advice from, from people that had actually done it. That's crazy. Even how did you get, how did you build such a good network? Cause 99.5% of people uh, or the seven aren't going to be able to have access to all these people that you've met before. So, and obviously your platform is amazing. I think that's just a major benefit in itself to even learn from, from, from these people, but just as yourself, like how did you, someone that's listening that probably wants to get better at networking, how did you get so good at networking? How did you get in front of Mark Cuban or Gary Vaynerchuk or uh, and all these list of names? Yeah, so um, I think I think it's worth noting that I'm actually naturally quite a shy person, um, and uh, I when I started Founder, I had no network. Uh, not even my parents aren't entrepreneurial. My dad was a teacher. My mum was a nurse. They're now retired. Um, I grew up in a, a small suburb called Greensboro. I don't know oh, if you yeah. know that area, <laughs> in the northeastern suburbs. Yeah. Um, so I didn't go to school with a lot of people that their parents were business minded or business orientated. Um, so it was a public school. So I just want to preface that. So I've had to build my network from scratch. And it wasn't easy. Uh, 
But there is one principle that I would share with everybody, and that is this idea of serving first and asking later. So oftentimes people want to reach out to somebody and they say, hey, can I pick your brain? Or, hey, uh, I I want your time that is very valuable to you. Can you give it to me? That's effectively what somebody's saying. And I will give you nothing in return except you're entitled to help me because I've asked. <laughs> and I think I think that's really broken, right? Like I think yeah. if you want to build a network, you should always like and be surrounded by people that are maybe a few steps ahead of you or perhaps people that you could learn from. You need to approach it in the sense of how can I help this person? Like how can I genuinely help this person and not expect anything in return? But if you do, it has to be a fair exchange in value. So the way that I got in touch, so that's the basic premise of how you should look to build a network. And you don't, and and I say this because you don't have to have a business magazine or a podcast or a, or a massive platform like we have with Founder um, to be able to do that. But how I did it was I started this this little magazine on the side. That's how Founders started. We weren't always an online education platform. I started this magazine and I wanted to interview successful entrepreneurs because at the time I started hearing stories about friends of friends starting these online businesses and doing these crazy things of like, you know, building massive incomes and you know, building a lifestyle around this business and online businesses. And I, I heard about the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss and, Man. Um, so I wanted to know how these people were doing it. And I thought there isn't really a magazine or a platform out there that tells those stories. So I just started going out there and reaching out to people. Now, in the first four months of starting Founder, I got an interview with Richard Branson. Wow. Now, it wasn't it wasn't a, an easy thing to do, but I was able to kind of find his head of PR. And I never forget... Um, finding his head of PR, calling her like three, four, five times and not getting her to pick up and leaving voicemails. And then she she picked up finally and she was like, oh, I was, I was stumbling and I was in, I was living in McLeod in this really crappy house that I was renting with a, with a, my housemate. And I remember stumbling and, and I was like, oh, look, do you have a second to chat? And she's like, I've got literally two minutes before I jump on the tube. So she was based in London. And the tube is uh, the, the train network. And um, she said, oh, uh, I said, oh, you know, I gave my pitch and I stumbled. And she said, oh, yeah, look, I'm sorry I haven't been able to get back to you. And then she said, yeah, please understand, Nathan, we get like 10 of these pitches every single day. And then I sent an, an email and played on the fact that his first business venture was a student magazine. And for whatever reason, he said yes. And from that, I was able to kind of build up the authority of the brand. And so I pitched for the moon, but also I, I, I pitched in the sense that I want to use Richard Branson's story as a way to help educate our audience. And this is why we love to do that interview. It's not about I want to interview you and I want your time. And so... Um, then I started building from there. You know, I can tell you some great stories. Like you, you mentioned Gary V. I'll literally tell you how I got in touch with each of these people. So Gary V, um, uh, so we built up the brand and it was early days Instagram and I started building the founder Instagram and I grew it really fast and we had over like a million followers or something and Gary V's team got in touch with me and Gary V was launching a book. So he was looking for press. I think it, the the book was Ask Gary V, and so um, I spoke to his um, his biz dev guy, and we worked out we worked out how we can uh, align what I was trying to do with Founder with uh, helping promote Gary's book, and so then we were able to do an interview. He also gave us a great um, shout out and testimonial for the work that we're doing at Founder and all sorts of things, and then a relationship was born from there. Uh, Mark Cuban. Uh, uh, Mark Cuban was launching uh, a software at the time. It was a software where it was a similar concept to Snapchat where the, mis the message disappears, so it's a privacy-based okay. 
message. And I actually, I actually um, found his uh, PR person and said, "Hey, how can I help you get behind this software that you're building? I don't think it exists anymore." But and then so that's what we talked about as part of it. But we also got him to give back and share. So. I can keep going, man, but really, in essence, it's this idea of serving first and asking later, but then also building a platform that allows you to be able to serve first and and have a fair exchange or a mutually beneficial exchange in value. That's insane. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's it's really good. And um, number one, obviously, hustling to to get there, but then also as well, just always making sure that you're trying to provide them values um, is insane. And and then obviously, as you said, you build the relationship and you just get more names. And um, yeah, that's it's it's a really good way to do it. And um, what have you found from even speaking to um, all, all these people? Like, what do you what, what separates uh, them? from from the average entrepreneur or the successful entrepreneur with the average one yeah it's a good question it's a difficult one to ask um a uh, difficult one to answer sorry uh just because i meet so many of these super super successful people um basically every week uh so it's hard to kind of look at, at the characteristics but i can give you a few and and the first one to take away I think is all of these people, man, they are just human beings. Like they are no different to you or I, honestly. They, they are no different to you or I. There's somebody with an idea or, or a series of partners and they've just been working. But this is, this is literally all they've been doing, right? And, and yeah, they, they might be smart, but some maybe not even right place, right time, right people that they're surrounding themselves with, right environment, right opportunity. Uh, but I think that that's just, I just want to put it out there because I think oftentimes we put some of these really successful founders on a massive pedestal. Um, I think, you know, the, the, it's not true, right? Like they're, they're all human beings and I think it's it's important to acknowledge that. Um, so with regards to characteristics, I think um, all of these people have worked ridiculously hard. It's an obsession. I think if you want to build anything of true worth and significance, it has to be an obsession and you have to work really, really, really hard. I know there's this big push on four four day work week, life balance, all this kind of stuff. You can achieve that. But after, I believe after a certain period of time, right? Like I can tell you, Christian, that ever since for the past 10 years, since I've been building founder, I have never sacrificed uh, going to a social event, seeing my family. Um, I, I just never have, have made that choice. I've always like kind of gone to that social event or seen my family or hung out or got, gone to an event. Um, it's very, very rare that I would cancel because of work. However, in the early days, a founder, I was like working around the clock. And when I say working around the clock, I was doing 60 hour weeks and it's not healthy, but it's just what I found. And what I find amongst others, they work really, really, really hard. Do you work? Do you, is it healthy to work yourself to exhaustion or burnout? No. Is it what it's required? No, but you have to work super hard. And you have to be consistent and you have to be prepared to have a longer term view because all of these people, they've been doing this stuff for at least, you know, 10 plus years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so that's the first thing. The second thing is oftentimes we see the person that is the face of the business. Like me, I am the face of founder. Richard Branson is the face of Virgin. Elon Musk, the face of Tesla, SpaceX, uh, Sarah Blakely, the, the face of Spanx. So you see the face of these people and you 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 kind of hold them on this pedestal, but um, it's really the people around them as well that, that have helped them build this, these incredible companies. But let's take a step further. It's not just the people around them. It's, it's the founders' skills, people skills, the, the ability to identify talent, to lead, to motivate others, to find out how you can align that person's 
motivations, with your company's motivations, to find incredibly smart people to come and work for you, to go on this journey with you, to work through interpersonal challenges. And and that is key, right? Like every single person, they have, I believe, really strong people skills. And if they don't, like let's just say they're like a, like they're the more, you know, they say when you're looking to start a business, you need a hacker and a hustler. And Steve Jobs was the uh, hustler and Steve Wozniak was the hacker. So he's like the techie guy. Even if you are the person that we're interviewing or you're a well-known hacker, like a Mark Zuckerberg, he's obviously clearly the, the technical genius. Um, he had enough people skills to identify other people to come on the journey with him and then also identify others along the way. So I think that's also key as well to, to have these people all have incredible people skills. And then probably the last one besides just working hard, great people skills is just this ridiculous belief and faith uh, in, in themselves. And I think, mindset is such a critical thing and it's not this woo woo kind of thing like i remember one time i met this guy super successful founder out of melbourne and he said um nathan like do you think you can build a hundred million dollar business with founder and i said yep i think i can and he said well that's half the battle isn't that crazy to think to think that like half the battle is just believing you can do it so that's the takeaway here. All of these people that I interview that or that we've you know we've told their story on our platform, they have an incredible belief in themselves and and they they have an incredible mindset to to never give up, to keep going, to pivot, to change, to go through adversity, to go through hardship. And they are surrounding themselves with really solid people that are supporting them throughout that journey, significant others, co-founders exec teams the list goes on that's crazy even um let's even with the, a lot of these guys it's not it's not their first rodeo before they hit and even with yourself i i assume before even founder um you had a few businesses before uh, that you were that you were running um i i'm, I'm assuming that uh, that you no. that or no, it was, or founder was always the first yeah founder was my oh. first business um okay so I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, still yeah. making them. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I think founder could be, if, if it was my second business or if I knew what I knew now, of course, it would be 100 times the size after doing it for 10 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, how, are you finding, how are you finding when you say you've made a lot of mistakes um, along the way? Um, has it? What's probably been uh, the biggest lessons um, that you've taken out of business um over the over probably like you, i know you said last year was probably your hardest but are there, are there any major lessons that you've looked on and uh, maybe you can share with people that so they don't make the same mistake or, or... yeah i will but i i, I want to caution um these mistakes because have you heard of this idea of situational stage advice no so it's easy for for anybody listening right now to listen to this podcast, listen to my story, and for me for, for me to share my experiences and then go away and take that. But it actually is it actually depends as well what stage they're in. And it's actually can be quite situational. So I'll give you an okay. example and then I'll and then I'll answer your question. And then I'll I'll kind of preface where where I'll go with this to answer it to best I can. So um Gary V says that you should, it sounds like you're a fan of Gary, right? So Gary V says that you should write back to every message and respond to people and show extreme amounts of care, like on your socials, right? And he often writes back to people and responds. Yeah. Um, well, that's all well and good for Gary because he probably has close to a thousand staff, right? And he, he's in a position where he can do that. But if you're just starting your business and your number one goal is to, to get sales, Maybe it's probably not something it's the best use of your time. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know, right? It depends on what situation you're in or what stage you're at. So I can give you lessons and I'll give you lessons along the way, but I'll, I'll canvas that. I'll give you some of my early lessons that I learned and, 
and I've reflected upon, but then I'll give you some of my most recent lessons from, you know, doing it for nine years and trying to scale up a business and try and double, triple that, you know, try to double your annual revenue when it's already, you know, in the eight figures, multiple eight figures, right? So then I can, so I can, you see how it, it so that's why I want to preface that yeah. because um, it's just different for, for different stages, these mistakes. So let's start with the early stage. So in the early stage, some of the mistakes that I made was, I, I built a business on rented land. I built a business on rented land. So I know a lot of people these days, they want to start a business on Amazon, right? That's rented land. You build your business, you get traffic, you get customers from Amazon. And that's awesome. It's an easy way to start. It's a great business model. But over time, you need to look to diversify uh, your risk. So you need to perhaps have a Shopify store. You need to perhaps sell your products in retail. You need to perhaps have a referral program, all these different ways to still sell your product. So when I started the magazine with uh, Founder, I, the, the, way, the reason that we made $5.50 and got two subscribers on the first day was because I launched it on the App Store and Google Play Store. So it was a digital magazine. And so I launched on a platform where people were used to paying for content and they had a massive customer base. But over time, uh, after about a year, so, so I launched Founder on the side while I was working my day job. I was working in IT support. I used to crawl under people's desks and fix their computers or change their password because they couldn't log in or pull out a keyboard and then put it back in from a USB like so so that's what i used to do and so I, I it took me about a year to build up founder till i could go full time on it and so i was just relying on apple to drive me customers but then over time um one of the ways that i got uh, a lot of customers a lot of magazine subscribers and readers was whenever you typed in forbes or entrepreneur or ink magazine founder would come up in the search engine so i was using what is called app store seo and I was doing something called keyword stuffing, where I was stuffing a lot of the keywords for these big business magazines for them to show up. And then Apple changed the rules, didn't they? And you couldn't have as many keywords. And then the amount of subscribers that we got on a daily basis just halved. So this was a mistake I made. I relied on one traffic channel or one way to bring in customers and I built a business effectively on somebody else's land. So that's just one great example of a lesson that I've learned. I could go for days, man, uh, but that's a good one. Uh, then most recently, uh, you know, the lesson that I learned, once again, I relied on uh, you know, I talked about paid advertising. We had some challenges there. It's all been fixed now. But like, um, I didn't have diversity of the the, the business model. Didn't have uh, annuity or diversity in in the model. So now that's one of the what it we're we're moving to a subscription model. Not because it it builds a better business model. Also because it's a better deal and it's a better it's a better experience for the customer so instead of paying for one course you get access to all of our courses and it's we're actually doing a disservice to the customer if we or our community if we charge for every single course individually so it made not to just make business model sense but it actually made sense to build a superior product in the marketplace as well right i talked about individual courses there being more than the subscription with founder plus right so so that's one mistake I made, you know, uh, I hired people that weren't the right fit, but I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I was too quick to hire people that, that they just weren't values aligned. Right. I honestly, I, I wasn't, I wasn't hiring based off values. I, I thought I was, but I wasn't. Um, so all these, all these kinds of things, right. There's so many mistakes and lessons, man. Oh, dude, it's crazy. Like we could go for days, but, um, you know, like I, uh, I didn't, uh, we used to do strategy sessions and I used to, you know, get our, our leaders in the business and, and I let them kind of dictate. I didn't let them. I, 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 I involved them too much in the decision-making 
and the general consensus, even if it wasn't the direction that I wanted to go. So I, as the CEO, I didn't make the call. And, you know, so it's just little things like that. There's so many, man. But I hope That's that kind of gives you what you're looking for. Yeah, no, bloody oath. Um, how are you, even even as yourself as like a business owner, like, you know, they you look at how business has been traditionally run. I say like business owners, they're hard. Uh, they're, you know, they're, you know they're, 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 they can be they can be hard to their staff, and then you know you've got someone like Gary Vee that that comes out and you know he's he's obviously released his book about 12, uh, 12 soft skills and stuff like that, and then he's got his new one that he's been working on, kind candor things like that. He's and he's trying to teach people about uh, he's trying to teach people just maybe just providing uh, just yeah a new a new a new way in business i would say a new a new way to to treat your staff and things like that how how do you how do you find like yourself are you uh do you feel like you're you're kind of in the middle are you are you kind of a bit a uh, bit too nice are you uh are you are you very aggressive like what's your uh, what's your way yeah. in that? what do you feel what do you feel like is the right or wrong way in this because the reason why i'm asking this is um uh, I feel like myself that I, I could be probably a, a little bit too 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 soft in a sense, and you know I'm just always just trying to find the the balance that I don't really see myself as an as an aggressive um, as an aggressive uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like a business owner, and that's why I'm just curious to get your opinion on it. Yeah, so um, look, definitely, man, I'm definitely on the softer side. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's been a journey, right? Like it's been a journey um, learning how to hold people to account, right? Like, you know, w wanting to be liked, wanting to be liked by everybody or your team. Um, that's that's the sad that's the sad truth when you start a business, especially if it's by yourself. It's quite lonely. It's, it's really lonely. Um, and, you know, you'd want to go out with everyone for drinks, but – is that appropriate? Uh, you know, can can you be one of the guys? Can, can you can you make that choice? Can can you get the best of both worlds? Maybe not. Like you know, you want to be respected as a leader. Um, so, for me personally, I'm definitely on the softer side. Uh, I am getting better of uh, uh, over time, um, probably because of my experiences, and and unfortunately, I think. People have taken advantage of me um, and my kind, uh, my kind natured heart and spirit, uh, and so that's made me maybe a little bit more tougher. Uh, I'm certainly nowhere near on the tougher side, um, but I really care. Like, and and you know, so we have a, a leadership team at Founder, and we have a leadership coach. His name's Gary Dooley. He's incredible, and um, one thing he's doing with with myself and the leadership team is uh, we went through disc profiles. And he got everyone to fill out the disc profile. It's basically a personality profile. And he, we mapped it all out and we mapped out, um, you know, why. And, and it, was, it was very telling. We, we mapped out the spread of, of where people are on that disc profile. And uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was spot on. But one thing that I reflected on when looking at that is like, yeah, it shows that I'm more on the collaboration side the taking people on the journey side less being direct get it done now um but uh it comes down to people's personalities as well that's where i'm going with this right so it's not there's no formula uh for i guess how you should treat your your team members i think you should just be aware of what you lean towards, right? Whether you're really tough or you're on the softer side. Um, and But still, I think what's key is having that awareness to know how you interact with people, how you show up, and how it's aligned with the business, right? Like, and, and where the business is going, what you want to achieve, and the kind of culture and environment that you want to uh, foster. So for me... Yeah, I, I'm definitely on the softer side. It's, you know, something I'm working on. But at the same time, um, I'm really working on becoming a really effective leader. And I think you can be on the softer side and be an effective leader that drives business outcomes, has an incredible uh, workplace. And it's a, it's a company that's growing, it's thriving, it's prospering. 
and uh, you're doing great things for the world and you, you're bringing your vision to life. That's and amazing. Purpose, or all those things. What what challenges have you faced since you've like scaled? You've obviously gone in your last ten years on on many different levels. Um, is there been like something that at every time that you look to scale, there's something that just is a reoccurring thing at every at every point, or is it is it just different every single time? Yeah, I think it's different every single time. It's situational stage. Um, yeah, it's situational stage, but a lot of it is people, man. Honestly, a lot of it is people. Um, it's your job as the CEO to get the best people on the bus that you can find. Like uh, uh, your job as CEO is to get the best people on the bus or the right people and the right and make sure they're the right people and to make sure there's enough cash in the bank. But that that that's really your two jobs. Um, and then also, you know, if it's if it's if if it's a if you're a founder CEO, um, set, setting the vision and, and and getting really clear on the purpose and that and the vision and the purpose is something that I'm probably I probably should have done a better job at. Like for me, it's natural and I thought it was in the spirit, but if it's not clearly articulated, it's not something that people can connect to. So yeah, you really need to be able to lead and motivate and inspire others around that vision and that purpose. Um, so. Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of the things around scaling is really people and finding the right people and developing the right people as well and finding finding leaders. You need more leaders, right? It's you need you need leaders, you need solid people around you. And uh that's that's how you can scale a business. Like you look at your calendar, Dan Martel, he's a great, really smart guy. He talks about looking at your calendar. And when you're scaling or growing a business and you're trying to hire, you look at your calendar, you look at all the things you're doing and you look to effectively hire away your calendar so you've got nothing on your calendar. So you spend a lot of time thinking. Um, so, yeah, mistakes I've made is just like being, you know, not hiring the right people, not finding the right people, not setting the values right, not hiring based off values, um, not holding people to account, not setting strong kpis targets having strong rhythms uh having a strong goal setting system um c clearly articulating the vision and the purpose and making sure everyone in the company knows that that's still a work in progress um even the value side you know we've just redone our values recently and you know really making sure that um our leaders are well supported and we're developing future leaders in the business um, but yeah, it's it's all people. It's people. Businesses are built by people, Christian. And if you want to keep growing your business, you just need to keep developing your people and getting the best people you can. That that value is aligned. How do you find the right people? Like obviously, you've you've started to build a decent name for yourself, so I'm sure some people, um, you know, gravitate towards you. Uh, but in a general sense as well, like I, I'm sure that you've had times where it's been it's been very tough to to find the right person. Do you have a specific method? Um, is it just seek ads? Like, are you networking? Like, what's uh, what's the secret sauce? Uh, really tough one. Um, so, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. What you want to get to. This is what you want to get to, and this is what I want to get to with founder. Um, I want to build up founders' employer branding profile that it's a workplace of choice, and we have a talent wait list. We have extremely talented people that are hungry because they believe in our vision and our purpose and the work that we're doing. That's something, it, it's a journey they want to go on and it's something they want to be a part of and they're really talented and skilled. Um, that's, that's what you want to get to. Like if you want to be an iconic business, all the best businesses, they have, they get the best talent and yeah. people are waiting to work for them and that it's a dream job. Um, the tricky thing with us is a lot of people want to come and work here just because they want to learn how to start a business themselves. And that's that's okay too, right? That's totally fine. Um, but if they only stay for six to twelve months, then it can be a bit tough, right? So it's kind of that 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 balance of finding people that perhaps have tried to start a business themselves and realize they're better in a team, or perhaps somebody that start tried to start a business themselves and realized actually they're they're more of a a, a kind of um, right hand or, or somebody that's part of a journey uh, versus actually starting. They're less of a starter 
Um, so, but they can still get those kicks and, the, and you know, share in the upside of the growth of the business, all these other things, right? So that's something that's been important to us that we've had to work out as well. Um, so it starts with the talent wait list. Then secondly, I think it comes down to uh, your values. Um, I think, you know, I know a lot of people talk about it and, you know, it's something that I never really understood truly, but um, it's really, really key. Uh, and and really kind of promoting, rewarding, re promoting, rewarding, firing, paying bonuses off people that are living the values, not just around their commercial acumen or what they're doing from a commercial perspective. And that's your blueprint for looking for the kind of people that you want in the organization. And then lastly, I think it's... Um, I, I, like, I used to be really into like these crazy hiring processes and all sorts of things. I think it's just understanding that you're just not going to get it right every time. And it's really tough. And yeah. you only truly know when they come in the business yeah. and, <laughs> and, and you just see, you just, you just see, and, and it's your job to give them as much information around the business as possible. Right. I, I've made the mistake where I've brought on, absolute guns but they're not the right fit for the kind of business that we are like it's you know it's very chaotic it's it's you know there's not much process it, it, like all yeah, those yeah, yeah. And, and so they're guns and they're really talented they're super smart but they struggle to influence outcomes amongst the chaos right yeah. so so it's it's really it's your job as well to make sure that you're letting them know this is what it's truly like it's not just you selling them it's yeah. it's actually you revealing the warts and all of like this is what you're coming into like expectation managing right you might get a gun and they're used to having a big budget and they want to hire a ton of resources and it's like hey wait a second like we're not funded we are bootstrapped we don't like you know we're on a growth trajectory but at the same time we're on a shoestring budget you see what i mean so it's that expectation yeah. management as well so you can find a players but it's not the right fit as well yeah. um so you know it's it's not just like you know at founder we're letting go people because they're all bad or anything a lot of the time it's just not the right fit what do you like uh i'm sure you've probably gone better over time but uh, were you are you very fast to identify? Okay, they're not the right fit. I think it's let's let's like let's let them go. Or were you like trying to heal a wounded bird where you'd be dragging this out for for how long, and then you just like you know this is not working. Yeah. So I think you know the answer, and I think it's yeah. something that happens with every you know developing leader. Uh, it takes time to get better and better at it, and you tend to put it off, especially in the early days. Uh, but as you know, you just yeah. When you really get into like the, the the problems, the problems get tougher as you scale a business. The problems get tougher, but you get better, if that makes sense. So, yeah. um, you know, like if somebody's not working out, that's water off a duck's back to me. Now I used to, you know, not sleep the night before, and that doesn't mean I'm ruthless. It's just I just have to do what's best for the business, and I actually have to do what's best for that person instead of them wasting their time. Right. And though that person will find another job and find somewhere that's probably a better fit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely was somebody that used to put it off and, you know, uh, please understand now as well. Like I don't manage everyone. I manage like I manage a leadership, uh, you know, a, a group of leaders and, and they're accountable for, for growing the business. And, you know, you asked around scaling, like the speed in which your company's growing at the stage that we're at, right. Is, is, is the, the performance of your leadership team yeah right so it's it's your it's your uh people around you you know your lieutenants uh that are around you that that are really going to be the the difference uh so like you know uh if a company's doing let's just say a billion dollars in annual revenue and a new ceo comes in um and he's inherited his leadership this leadership team his or her's leadership team um usually Unfortunately, what happens is is that that he or she shakes it up, uh, shakes it up and and reworks the leadership team because you know for whatever reason if it's not growing it's usually you, the first place you look is that leadership team. But the reason I'm saying that is I, I I'm not doing a lot of hiring or firing anymore, right? If that makes sense. All I'm doing is yeah. just focusing on that leadership team. Nice, nice, and 
your company, you've obviously created a large community of entrepreneurs and business leaders. Like, how do you foster like a sense of community and encourage collaboration among the members? Yeah, so um, that's something that's an area of development for us. I think. Um, I think it just starts with just genuinely caring, uh, just genuinely caring, and doing whatever we can to to serve our members, and just living by our purpose. Our purpose is. You know, we want to build a business that helps fuel and accelerate people's growth and their future through entrepreneurship. So we just just keep living our purpose. Nice. Do you have any like new exciting projects or anything that you're working on, or is just found a plus? Like it's obviously pretty fresh. So I'm sure is that pretty much all in on that? Yeah, all in on found a plus. Uh, we we have a product that we're testing. It's a coaching product. Uh, that's doing really well, uh, but that's not public yet. Uh, it's just kind of in beta. Um, but yeah, look, uh, there's a lot of exciting things happening at Founder. We'll, we'll be doing a rebrand sometime this year. Yeah. Uh, we'll be, you know, yeah, we're just going all in on Founder Plus. That's the biggest focus. And how can we continue to to make that product better and better and better? Nice. What's your What's your thoughts on AI? Have you Have you have a look into it? Have you integrated anything into your business? As of yet? Yeah. Uh, a lot of our team members now use chat GPT where, where they can. Um, we, like, uh, we're, I got my, my EA, she's doing like a few interesting courses and all sorts of things that people are putting out and we're going to canvas it back to the leadership group and then we're going to come up with a bit of a game plan around how we can better use it within our business. Um but uh, yeah, that's as far as we've gone. We use it for copy, promos, ads. So yeah, yeah, we're encouraging our team members to use it, um, and I'm keeping my eye open. Uh, but we're not going. We're not going too deep, to be honest. I know it's the future. Um, for now, though, we've got a, like you know we've got we've got a pretty extreme focus on building out Founder Plus and growing that platform, and and just truly truly trying to make it the best product in the marketplace for, for entrepreneurs that want to start or grow a business. What, what is your vision with, with founder? Like where do you see it going in the next 10 or 20 years? And yeah, like what's your motivation just to keep it growing? Oh, we want to be, we want to be the global leader that, that supports and creates entrepreneurs, like, like a, like a, a true global brand that creates and supports entrepreneurs. That's, that's the vision. That's amazing. We're not, that's we're not there yet, but um, that's, that's what we're working towards. That's amazing. Hey, well, how do you, how do you define happiness? Happiness. Um, just, that's the final question. I thought I'd just throw out there. I always yeah. like to just ask uh, uh, ask yeah. that question just to get people's uh, response on that. Oh, I define happiness as uh, this is feeling of joy, this feeling of joy, this sense of fulfillment, um, the sense of love, connection, warmth. Um, yeah, that's how I define happiness. And is it is it something where, like, uh, for yourself, um, uh, do you find do you find a lot of joy? Like, what are, like what are your passions outside of out of business? Oh, that's part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the problem, man. Uh, yeah. I need to find new passions. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, look. I'd say uh, I'm passionate about horse racing. I own a okay. share in a horse with my dad. I love the spring nice. carnival. I'm a member of the VRC. I'm always, so, yeah, I'm always going to the track during spring carnival. I love to travel. I love to explore and experience new, different, interesting cultures and meet interesting people. So I just come back from a big South America trip where I basically backpacked. I did a Kentucky. It was, it was wild, man. Was so How was that, yeah? Yeah, awesome. uh so i love to travel uh i love i love food uh even though i've got a lot of food allergies i'm allergic to dairy egg sesame peanut Ooh. coconut or nuts wow. so um i uh, have anaphylaxis uh so i've got to be careful but i love nice food um i love spending time with my family uh, family is really important to me i've got a lot of great friends love spending time with my friends uh, those are a few things, but I definitely need to find. Somebody asked me a question. Uh, they said, "What are you? What is your biggest accomplishment apart from growing founder?" 
and uh, it took me a while to think about it. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think um, I think I need to find some other passions and hobbies. I'm, I'm looking to get into chess. Uh, I really like playing chess. And uh, also want to explore like salsa dancing or something maybe. I did like okay. the tango. I did learn how to tango. Like I, I did a, a thing in, when I was in South America. It was fun. But like, yeah, I need to find some new passions, man. Do you, do you struggle to like switch off? So, for example, it's like Saturday, like Sunday, Sunday, one o'clock. Like, uh, if you're obviously at home and you know you're obviously not with family or anything like that, do you struggle? Like, is your mind always just, just, just running and like you're trying to tell yourself, like Nathan, just like calm the fuck down, like you like <laughs> focus on something else, and then your mind just is still just in there, or are you generally okay to, with that? Used to, used to, used to struggle to switch off. Now I'm okay. Ever since I experienced burnout, so I experienced burnout after COVID. For us, though, you're in Melbourne, so COVID was just ridiculous here yeah. in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, lockdowns were ridiculous. So I experienced uh, burnout early 2021, and that took me a while to recover. That was hardcore. Um, so, yeah, ever since then, I've, I've been pretty good on looking after myself and being kind to myself. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I used to be like that. Sometimes hard to switch off, but no, I'm pretty good these days. I, I really try and practice and cultivate being present. That's good. That's 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 really good. Um, was there anything like even just through through your tough times, like last year, for example, was it something that you that you started doing that assisted you, you know, through your tough times in business and or life in general. Um, or was it just yeah. maybe your hobbies? Like, was it meditating, like meditating every morning, meditating okay. every morning? I, I'm a big fan of uh, mindfulness meditation. Okay, that's interesting. I've just just started yoga over the last probably three four months, and never I've never been able to meditate. But I feel like ever since I've started that, I've there, there's been some form of meditation in there which is which has assisted me and kept my mind fairly fairly clear which i was i was thinking i was actually thinking about it the other week i'm like last year was obviously i feel like i had a, a bit of a tough year as well and i was like i think this would have assisted me a lot <laughs> assisted mm. me a lot last year so that's um oh, that's really good to hear so at least i know like uh i'm on a decent little path at the moment but at least i know when it when the uh when it starts getting tough again just uh just start doing my yoga moves and <laughs> we'll be all right. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> oh, oh, Nathan, I, I really appreciate you taking out the time to and providing so much value. Uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure we'll definitely do this uh, again sometime in the future. And, and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll potentially cross paths down in Melbourne. Uh, I don't know if you're still in the north. I, uh, yeah, you know, I've grown. I grew up. I grew up in Bandura. That's why when you said Greensboro, oh. I was like, "This is <laughs> this is this is funny." But uh, I'm, uh, yeah. So I'm sure we'll cross paths <laughs> someday. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm Southside man. So, uh, yeah. But nice. man, it's great to connect. Thank you so much for your time and the opportunity. I appreciate your time. No worries. You have a really good day. You too, brother. Speak soon. Have a good day.